call. The hour being seven o'clock, as duly noted, we will convene the meeting of the Board of uh, Library Trustees on, um, on November 10th, 2021, where two days, uh, our ordinary meeting would have been on Monday night, but because of a town event, we have rescheduled. We do have a quorum present. And so the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the October 20th, 2021 meeting. Has all of the members had an opportunity to uh, review the minutes? Yes. I spoke to Mary Macy Phelps. She okay. there was a typo. I did spell her name mask. <laughs> yes, I noticed. Okay, that, that was yeah. the only thing I noticed. Yeah. The other thing I did in the beginning when I was writing um, library staff, I put you and Joan together. So just I just changed Joan. Mm -hmm. I put her town staff underneath where it says library. library. Okay. All right. So with that uh, revision, are there any further deletions, amendments, revisions? Saying none, the chair will accept the motion to accept the minutes of the October 20, 2021 meeting. So moved. Moved by Trustee Macy Phelps, seconded by Trustee Van Au. We'll just give uh, uh, Trustee Persons an opportunity to join us. Good evening, Trustee Persons. Hello. We are just uh, about to approve the minutes of the October 20th meeting. Do you have any revisions, uh, deletions, amendments? No, I do not. The chair, the motion on the floor made by Trustee Macy Phelps, seconded by Trustee Van Au, is to approve the minutes. Uh, the chair will call the roll. Trustee Van Au? Aye. Trustee Ryan? I think, I think Trustee Ryan's muted. Uh, I think she dropped. Did, she, did we lose, did we just lose Trustee Ryan? Yeah. No. She was just there. She was. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, we can wait for her to rejoin. Trustee Cole? Aye. Trustee Macy Phelps? Aye. Trustee Persons? Aye. The chair also votes aye, and we'll just wait a moment to see if Trustee Ryan can rejoin the meeting. Hmm. Well, with no opposition, let's move on. The minutes are approved. Yeah, so we'll just say five. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the director's report. And as our usual procedure, the report is um, uh, accepted as submitted. But we do uh, always afford the library director a few minutes to make some hi highlights, whatever, on the report or anything she wants to add. So, Lizzie. Thank you. I just let Maria back in. Okay. Oh, great. Um, it's it's only been a few weeks, but it's um, just some things I've been noticing that we've got a lot of patrons back in the building, going back to their routine. It's been really busy. The, all the public service desks have been busy. Um, so it's, it's been a, some adjustment. You know, I keep, there's more and more adjustments as we get out of the pandemic. We're open. Oh, anybody's in the building. And then, and then those kids come back. And then now, so it's, it's interesting to see us in waves, you know, readjust to what was, normal, but it's good to see. So um, we did our time honored Halloween story time and parade. Um, we did do registration. So it was still a nice group. We did in the big community room and, um, but that felt good. It felt like back to normal somewhat. So, and story times have moved in, indoors this November and December. Uh, we have more and more programs indoors um, and some still are on Zoom or hybrid. And, but more people are opt to come into the building. I think that there's still that Zoom fatigue. So, um, and Claire, she has been doing all of her book clubs, you know, consistently throughout the, the pandemic and, and remotely as we don't have the Islington branch open yet. Um, and she's continued to be the author whisperer. She's got uh, Ted Reinstein's coming in December as well. Um, and he's gonna be in person and we're also gonna have a hybrid option so people can zoom in from home. And she just told me last week that we have uh, William Kent Kruger is going to uh, do a in conversation program, and that will be on Zoom. I didn't hear the name. Excuse uh, William what? Kent Kruger. And so his, I think the most recent one is uh, This Tender Land. So her book club had read that book, and so be she was very excited about getting that. So that's one thing about this is that having getting authors who can come mm -hmm. virtually and still, you know, our, the community has this. 
question to answer and getting to ask some questions has been has been a bonus, I would say. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to note was uh, something I included in the packet. It was really hard to read, but I did receive a typed letter on like beautifully thin paper. <laughs> And it was all, um, it was dressed to me and it was letting me know about Karen Gallagher's great work doing her outreach deliveries. You know, she does homebound delivery before the pandemic and has continued throughout. And it was just a heartfelt letter of how the library is so important to this patron and Karen spending the time talking on the phone with her and picking up books and suggestions. And it like moved me to tears. And I went downstairs and gave it to Karen before I, you know, I, I scanned it because I want to share that with you that the impact that we have or that the staff has is, it's really great to see that it's heart, it's heartwarming. Um, so those are some, those are some good news, some good news. <laughs> well, it's, it, it is always rewarding to see letters like that. Um, yes. You know, so you know how the trustees feel about the quality of the staff yeah. And, yeah. And that they have to our patrons. And so we're not surprised to receive those type of letters. Yeah. service, But it's always, it's always nice and please express to Karen the gratitude of the trustees for her continued work and, and the dedication and commitment that she that she brings to the job as the entire staff does. Yes. Thank you. I will. Any questions, comments on the director's report? <clears throat> Seeing none, uh, we will move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the staffing update. So Exciting, good news there too. We, um, we've been approved for, well, we had an, an opening for that was Caitlin Moore's position at the branch as a branch library assistant, which was 17 hours. And um, going through the, the iterations of how we can potentially open the branch more hours, um, you know, we made a state a statement for our case of why we would need extra hours. And um, we have found that within the budget that we can have two benefited position, library assistant positions. So that 17 hour position will now be posted as a 24 hour position. And then we will have another 20 hour position. And so when we get to the branch part of it, but I would ask for, you know, your input on publicly, you know, setting the schedule for the branch you know, for when we open. But um, so we will be posting that these, both these positions will, as we've been talking about the last few months, have a shift, even the branch library assistant will have one shift at the main library, hopefully. And, and then the rest of the hours of the branch and then the other 20 hour position will, er, there'll be shifts at both places as well as, so that there are this, that it's one library um, team that so whether you visit the branch on a Wednesday, you may see Caroline. And if you visit the main on a Monday, you might see Caroline there. So that um, this affords us an ability to open the branch more hours, but still um, really bring the team together and the community together. So they'll see the same faces, which I'm excited about. Um, but that so that those positions will be posted hopefully within the week so we can get some some great new additions. I'm excited. <laughs> And you've run the numbers with with the town finance department and finance department and uh, Chris Coleman gave me his approval last week. Give me the thumbs up. So, yes, yes, uh, trustee person. Lizzie, have you um, rewritten the library assistant um, description, the the job description, or had Jones help? Because it yeah. sounds like you want you know you you want things to sound a little bit different now and things. Yeah. To that's so. a great question, Mary Beth. Thank you. Um, we did. We worked through that because I didn't realize that. Well, I did realize we have it's there's library assistants, but we had narrowed them down to one that was posted for children's one that's circulation at the main library and one that was for the branch and all of them had the same duties, but they were mm -hmm. just listed separately. And as we're moving more toward cross training so that we have a strong team that can redundancy that we can have people, you know, train in different departments, we, we just collated them, we just put it together. And under one, you know, description, it will say this library assistant may have shifts at the main or the branch. And then listed below are all, you know, if you're working in the children's department, more, uh, those duties might be more helping being familiar with kids books and doing helping with craft prep. And so it just covers all the bases. But yeah, we worked through um, putting that together. And Joan was going to um, present it to the personnel board just for their final, you know, because it was for, it's the same position, same grade. It was literally just 
parsing it out by department. And we're trying to make it easier and give us the flexibility when we hire people to train them in different departments. So great. yeah, that was great. I think that's that's wise. And it sounds like uh, best practices for in terms of managing resources. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on the staffing update? Hearing none, the next item on the agenda is the holiday schedule for the 2021-2022 a year, which Lizzie uh, provided to us. Has any, everybody had an opportunity to review the skip post schedule? Yeah. I, yeah, uh, Trustee yeah. Macy Phelps. My, my, my question is, um, a couple of the items were noted as pending approval of the personnel board. What's the, what's the review process? You know, obviously we wanna make sure that anything we're approving is okay. So how's that gonna work, Lizzie? So yes, yeah, seeing as I know we've had discussions over the past, especially of, you know, making sure that the library is in line with other municipal buildings. And so I did, um, I, asked a few questions to the personnel of the department about you know where we would fit where um and and that's why i did asterisks because basically this the hall i will explain it so massachusetts had if a holiday falls on a sunday you observe it on monday but if it falls on a saturday typically they they actually you do not have to observe it on friday but practice has been in westwood that they do and, but it's not written in the personnel policy. So uh, my understanding is that every, I guess maybe it's every year they do have to submit that as, are we gonna continue with this, this practice of honoring the Saturday holiday on a Friday? So um, that is why I, I just marked them because they do, I think that they're meeting, either they're deciding in the next few weeks and I didn't wanna delay us discussing the holidays because it, until December. So, um, so that's why they're pending that. I assume it will go through seeing as New Year's Day is on a Saturday. And um, so that would take Friday, it would be closed on the Friday. And then the Juneteenth that it has to um, be officially, yes, officially brought in. So I, I'm thinking it's going that way, but that's why I just wanted to wait for official approval to make sure that we're in line. Well, I appreciate that with that caveat. And if, and if it changed, we could always Revi vote to revise the holiday schedule if the personnel board uh, had, had made some changes. I'm so, sorry, so. Um, Chair. Uh, Lizzie, I don't have the holiday schedule. Did that go out with all the rest of the documents? It, it, was, a, it was a separate email. She, it wasn't attached to the first one. It was sent out later on Monday, wasn't it, Lizzie? Yeah, it was um, It was later in the afternoon. I, I was going through the agenda and I realized that I hadn't sent that a holiday out. So I'm, I did do it as a follow-up email. I think it was at 350, right? On Monday. Yeah. Um, okay, yep. let me just check. I I got um it didn't go to the town email though, did it? Yeah. I, 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 I have you um all of you at a contact group, but because I have to uh, BCC you, it's sometimes it's harder for me to I can't just like reply all to the same thread. So there might have been a mistake. Oh, here it is. I found it in my yeah, okay. I you know I was only Sorry looking at the that, town Mary. email. Thank you. I've got it now. <clears throat> there, there was a question about from staff which i didn't i didn't make any changes on this but i i would want to ask you all about um january 2nd falls on a sunday and i and i think that we talked about it but i couldn't find it in my notes where we would normally be open two to five so there was a question of whether we would be able to be closed for that so it would be friday saturday sunday um, but I did not add that to this because I wasn't sure it wasn't typically January 2nd. We're not typically open. Uh, we are typically open. So that was a question. And then there's a lot of questions about the day after Thanksgiving. So we have, as long as I've worked here, we've been open. Um, I know other municipal buildings, every other municipal building is closed. So I was asked by staff to, to bring that to attention to see how the trustees feel about any future of the day after Thanksgiving. And I don't really have a lot of history around that. So I figured I would. Yeah, uh, Trustee Macy Phelps. Yeah, my, my first response is, I don't wanna keep adding days when we're closed. Yeah. That's my shoot from the hip, you know, my first thought. Yeah, never actually, right. I don't think, I don't, I wouldn't really feel that I would wanna make that decision tonight. No, right, right, right. We're setting a precedent. 
and I think we would need to look at if we're doing something because the other municipal buildings are closed, well, then we got to kind of take a step back and look at everything that we're doing okay. in, in, in that in that light. So, you know, I, yeah, I'm I not, think I, yeah, I, I'm not particularly I think we should just piling on days off. I, I agree. I think that's something we can revisit later yeah. if, and, yeah. if, and if the staff wants an opportunity to, you know, to present why they think it would it's okay. something do we're certainly willing to but but i mean we still have to we still don't know about juneteenth mm -hmm. right right still, oh, no, no, totally. so until we know i think if you know there is another holiday that's going to be added right yeah right June 19th. right so no, what is it that you're looking for right now a tentative a vote on to adopt the, uh, yeah the what i'm looking for right now is just the tentative on the on the one the document that i did send that did have those the asterisk as we pointed right. out. So it could, it could be subject to sub, sub later revision based on the decisions of the town personnel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But does our, does yeah. our so persons, did you have a question? Uh, I guess I'm still confused on the January 2nd. Um, the, that's not on here, but you want us to, what, what is it that you want about Sorry, that? Sorry, that was a question based on because the way the holidays the holiday falls on a Saturday. Right. And so they just, it just was brought to my attention of, are we going to be closed on this, on this Sunday? Because we're normally open two to five. And I think we had discussed at an earlier meeting that um, the day after Christmas as well. And so I, we did go ahead of staying closed because it was the 26th and it was only three hours and pending that the town was okay with it. And so we had done that, but for January, I didn't move forward with that because it was a new year. So mm -hmm. So I think it's appropriate in my eyes that um, we are close to 26 for this year. We may, and then just to, to move on with what's written here. I was bringing, I was just doing my due diligence to bring some concerns to you, but I was in no way expecting, you know, a decision oh. tonight okay. on those ones. Well, as far as January 2nd is concerned, you want to vet that with the town. Okay. And we could always, we could always, I mean, unless people want to decide it now. But, I, yeah, but I also think it would be helpful to, I mean, monitor the use of the library. I mean, right. if, you know, 14 people yeah. are coming in the door and, you know, yeah. I, I mean, it, it is still a very, it is still mm. very holiday-ish. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I have no problem with you know? doing it, but now I, I would defer to the, the, my colleagues as to what they would like to do. So, uh, Trustee numbers? Brian, what's that? Do you, do you have any numbers about last? Of course, it's a different day. Yeah, right. it's it's the Sunday, Sunday after the um, yeah, Sunday after the first. Or... You know, I could look into that. Last year, we were still in pandemic mode, so we weren't, yeah, so that, we weren't oh, doing weekends. True. But but you know what? I could um, okay. well, pull up. Let me ask you this, Lizzie. You you've yeah. been at the library a number of years, right? Do you have any anecdotal sense of of what happened? Or, if, for Sundays, a day, Sunday um, after a holiday or this time of year. I think a lot of people, tr I do think a lot of people travel, especially when they fall over the weekend. Mm -hmm. It really does yeah. depend on where the holiday, you know, if the holiday was on a, um, like a Wednesday, maybe people might be back by then, you know, but the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I, I mm -hmm. imagine it would be quite slow and, you know, but for a few hours, I don't know. I'm open to any motions the board wants to make. Do you want to revisit can I it? Ask, can I ask if people generally, if people want to take that as a comp day, is it, do they generally, are they generally able or, or is it, do you need enough coverage that people can't, not, not everyone who would ask to, you know, is able to do it? Well, Sundays, full-time staff cannot work Sundays. So it's, it's only the library assistants. They do get time and a half for working the Sundays, but so it is relying on a lot of our part-time staff to um, come in for those three hours. And I mean, a lot of times they're, they're happy to, but I do, I know that when it's a holiday weekend, it's harder to get coverage if people are going to go away for that weekend, especially after last Christmas where people couldn't really. So, mm -hmm. for, you know, the holidays, I don't know if that's part of it this year, but. Right. Um, I think for three hours, it, to me, it doesn't seem to make sense, but that's just my personal opinion. I would get it if it was a Monday, I get it because the kids would be all going back to school, but they're yeah. not. I think it's clearly a travel day or a chill day or take down any decorations day. It's not, I got to rush to the library day. So will you, would you make a motion to 
I would make a motion to have the library closed on Sunday, January 2nd, 2022. Okay, is there a second? A second. Second, okay. Any further discussion? We'll call the roll. Uh, Trustee Cole? Aye. Trustee Van Ow? Aye. Trustee Persons? Aye. Trustee Macy Phelps? I'm gonna abstain. Abstain. Trustee Ryan? Conflict of interest. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I love to go. <laughs> I, I love to go to the library that day. But I, but I, I, I get the rationale. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the chair votes. I so uh, it will be one, two, three, four, five. five. With one abstention. I'm nothing. One abstention. But let's make it clear that it's that it's not a precedent. It's not. It's only because it's a, it's right. it happens to be a Sunday, and it's and a, this, we're this only is, open a limited number of hours. Mm -hmm. If it Saturday and we were open full time, I okay. would do differently. And I think my colleagues would too. Does this have to be approved by the personnel board too, right? I will I will definitely um talk to Joan. I did not get that impression when we had talked about it before on okay. Sundays. So but I will definitely do my due diligence and and also you've indicated that. you may have trouble getting coverage that day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So for yep. those reasons, right. but okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Can I ask then, a quick question. Yes. Are you guys are you guys open this Friday after Thanksgiving yes. in twenty? Okay. Yeah. 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 That's a day people would would go to the library. Correct. No, because yeah. I think you were talking about for twenty twenty two the Friday after Thanksgiving. I thought is what you were questioning yeah, about. But, I was, but, yeah, and I didn't add it, it to this because we correct. have been open. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't sense there's any desire on the part of the board at this point in time to do that. Okay. No, no, particularly I agree. Since, particularly since we're adding, yeah, yes, we add another day off in June. But okay, definitely. That's just my sense from listening to my colleagues. Mm, correct. <laughs> that's okay. Um, any further discussion on the holiday schedule? If there's any change after the personnel board at the next meeting, just uh, let me know and we can put it back on the agenda, Lizzie. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, COVID-19 update. Not Anything. much. <laughs> okay. uh, thankfully, not much. I should say, I, I was saying I'm afraid to take it off the agenda. No, that's fine. We should keep. keep <laughs> but um, not much has been happening. I did, the Board of Health did, you know, there was a slight spike um, in the in the percentage, but it's still relatively low for Westwood. So it's, it's they're not expecting it to, to rise. And, um, but I was, I was thinking that I should reach out to the Board of Health for the wording, the recommendation as now that uh, the vaccine is available for, for five to 12, whether that will change any of the recommendations. So I hadn't yet, I just was thinking about it earlier today as I was listening more people talking about the vaccination status. So um, I don't know if there was any, what the board's feeling was on the word. Well, I, 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 you know, I've been to the library a couple of times and I know the signs are there and every, and, you know, I make it a point to walk around whenever I'm in there. And yeah. It came to me that everybody was observing the keeping the mask mask on. Yeah. And uh, you haven't advised us of any issues with the staff in terms of morale or concerns. Um, no, I mean, I think people are tired of wearing the masks. Just in I, general, other, but, as in, we but all in are terms coming. of, but in terms of the yeah. staff feels that it's, it's a safe place and, yes. and yes. the masks on then I would, my sense would be just keep on keeping on. Okay. And if the Board of Health wants to change, I mean, in terms of um, once kids are, the younger kids are vaccinated, I mean, they're wearing masks in there anyway, right? When I was in yes. there, the yeah, students yeah. were wearing the mask. So I, I don't see any reason at this point to, to change it. I think we should continue to be cautious. And as long as people seem to be respecting it without any difficulty yeah, instead. No feels that that it's a you know make helping to make the place a safe environment then my sense is to keep on keeping on especially going into the winter months with yeah. any colds <laughs> you know that 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 helps with other illness too mm -hmm. yeah right. exactly the flu exactly yes no. i agree so do, do if my do my any of my colleagues have any feel differently or want to add anything but i think i mean I, I, when i go there i see the people wearing masks i yes. staff tells me that they like it. Nobody's giving them a hard time about it. No. So. Okay. Good. Anything else on the COVID-19? 
Yeah. It'll be nice when we can take it off the agenda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not, not for the next few months. Yeah. Um, Wentworth Hall Islington Branch Library update. Something we enjoy talking about. Yes, especially when there's furniture that arrives. Um, the circulation circulation desk arrived on uh, Friday and was installed and it looks great. We have some great, um, I know I shared a picture with you all and there's display space in the front for book covers and it's it's shaped perfectly for the for the space that we have it kind of curved a little angled edge. Um, so we're excited about that and then today, Claire's desk was delivered and three chairs. <laughs> Things are coming in in bits and pieces. So no tables or shelving yet. We are talking to our company daily for updates, but it it did feel good to see even a chair. In this wasn't the, the, the 11th was a target date for some stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. so the last date that we had that the shelving was gonna ship was the 11th. And even the contact was trying to get it from the warehouse of, is that, later earlier i think there is some piping is the phrase piping for the shelving units is coming on a train from canada that's what mm. we know <laughs> so yeah. it, that's the update we have for that but i don't have like a, a date update that has shifted yeah so that. so stop stop stuff is coming in slowly but surely yes and and our sense was not to open until we have stuff that can really make the have the patrons have an enjoyable experience exactly. in there. And I, I, my sense is that that should still be the plan, but if, if my if board members feel differently, I'm, I'm happy to hear any discussion on that. Well, especially shelving, that would help. Especially shelving, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I, I don't know how Claire Macy. can hold a lot in her arms, but not right. that much. <laughs> right, Dusty uh, Macy Belcher, do you uh, want to have any? Yeah, sorry, I missed, I, missed, I, I think I missed, a little bit of that. Do you, do you have any sort of projection as to when we might be, you know, ready to open? January, February? I'm. You know? I was hoping mid December, but I yeah. would say January. In my head, when I think we do have, so the downstairs, uh, the lower level space is yeah. is potentially being used. So I was going to move forward where we were going to do uh, alphabet story time on Mondays if we approve of the new schedule. Um, and in that space, and I told the children's department to go ahead with, we're going to do that on and starting in the January session. Um, so I think that gives us enough time to get things in. And then even over the holiday weeks, even if yeah. it's quickly putting the books on the shelves, we yeah. could all go into high gear and do that. I think that, that makes sense. And, um, and I know some of the equipment that the first century, uh, fund has provided in the term forms of grant for a business center. Mm -hmm some of that has been ordered and and i think oh, some yeah. has arrived yes yes we have a lot but, so are we have a small storage closet with a lock and key and that's full of you know the boxes for the computer and the charging station and all of these great features that we want to mm -hmm. unpack and put together and put in place but so um, you anticipate that when we open the business center will, it would be operational as well yes, yes. yeah so, i think it's important you just need something to put them on. <laughs> I just need a desk. Yeah, I have one chair. <laughs> they can take turns using it. Yeah. And and in terms of the uh, the additional hours, are you still working with the the uh, town, the fiscal side, to make I've sure been, that all the grant ground if we to do that if we. No, we are. I from the town side. I've gotten approval that was went through the finance department and through Chris Coleman. And so I, so it's now it's up to the board to approve um, the set, to set the schedule. If you agree that, you know, Monday through Thursday, 10 to six, um, except for Wednesday, 10 to eight, if that was agreeable. Those are the amount of hours that we were able to work through with this and see how busy we are and, and move forward with that. But, um, but I'd love to hear your input on the timing or. Uh, Trustee Van Al. Um, you... I was just. So that's 34 hours, which is great. Um, I was just curious, you know, was the Wednesday increase, you know, uh, why 10 on Wednesday, I guess. <laughs> um, so Wednesday, yeah, we were just open one to one to eight, I think it was before. And the, and the main library was open on Thursdays, one to nine. So as we move forward with 
I would just the the that the one one library is open in the morning and then you go to the wrong side of town and you're like, oh, I have to now turn around and go because this isn't the morning. So if we yeah. could find the hours which we were able to have a full day, so at least we have one extra long day that from 10 to 8 you can you can access the library. Totally sensible. Thank you. Trustee Persons. Oh so the do you know if the rec department or you know, anyone else who's kind of going to be having programs in that space. Are there programs, especially for like the preschoolers going to be starting at like nine or any earlier than 10 so that such that there would be like a dead space, you know, that yeah. either parents couldn't come use the library because we're not open yet or, you know. Um, you know, I, I have to look because my instinct, I know that we typically, when I think of our early childhood programs, they're either 10 or 1030. But I haven't I haven't checked their most recent brochure to see if they start at 930. That's a good question. That's a good input because that would be the next. The, so the amount of hours that we found the budget would either be be open nine to five. But my that was what I was wondering. So from is it more important to be open from nine to ten or five to six? Letting the mm -hmm. who get off the train come in and grab their hold if they need to. Yeah, that's a good idea. Print something out or you know run yeah. out. So I wasn't sure on what end, but I, um, that's a good question to check out the early childhood programs. So what, that, what I think we should do then, now that we know that it fiscally um, seems to be feasible, mm -hmm. for the December meeting, why don't you prepare different options? Pros and cons. And, and yeah, so we can sort of see them in front of us and we can okay. debate the pros and cons, like the issue yeah. that should... What about the commuters, the recreation? Trustee Macy Phelps? Yeah, you, yeah I, th I think that's a great idea, Paul. And, you know, I, I think we're going to have to put something out there and see how it works. Yeah. I also yeah. wonder whether there may be seasonal adjustments that you want to make, just like you do with the, at the main library. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely like the idea of trying to support as well as complement what's going on at, you know, at, at in the other parts of the building. Yeah. So I like yeah. that in principle. Also as someone who has been known to frequent the area on Saturdays, mm -hmm. um, including mm -hmm. when my kids were little and you know, little league would be at Morrison Field or you'd be playing at School Street Playground or whatever, um, you know, it, sometime in the future, um, I, I would be curious as to whether, you know, there might be any any point in experimenting with, uh, you know, with weekend hours, but I do think, I do agree that the priority right now is the weekdays. Yeah. I like the idea of su supporting the other part of the building. I also like the idea of supporting commuters. I think we just have to be flexible. Okay. okay. I can do that. What I would suggest, Trustee Ryan, did you want to say something? Um, I, I was, I understand and I agree with Mary, um, but I was also questioning Fridays. Fridays seem to be a day where, okay, we don't have activities, school is over. We can go to the library with children in the afternoon, perhaps. Uh, I know you, you can't have everything all day, every day, <laughs> everywhere, but just a consideration that, I don't know. Just yeah, to... no, those are all good points. I was, I was speaking with um, the town administrator about Fridays and Saturdays because my, my initial hope was Monday through Saturday. And as we were, when the reality <laughs> of numbers came into it, it, it kind of got crunched down. And especially with the feedback from the board of, you know, okay, we can do this and then we can see and, and build hopefully in the future. But um, on the positive note, as we work through what we're working with for hours, you know, it was the positive spin that Chris mentioned was, you know, you have, you know, we have this branch, we have people can visit this. And then on Fridays and Saturdays for now, bring them to the main you know you have the main open you have especially the staffing staffing weekends is is difficult at times so to have two physical locations and at the branch for safety we always have to have two staff members in that space working so um i hope that for the future but at least on the positive side is you know when i thought of oh yeah okay well we always have the friday and saturday bring the community to the main library oh. but well the objective we have for mm -hmm. the of the public who may be uh, listening or seeing the meeting. The trustees want to increase the hours at the Islington branch, and we want to make it those hours be the most ex uh, accessible for people yeah. in terms of when people are in Islington, commuters. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the overall goal within the financial strict, you know, limitations that we have. And so, Lizzie, if you could, for, you know, work up a couple of different 
proposed schedules, and maybe we go with one initially. And as Mary, uh, as Trustee Macy Phelps said, maybe in the spring we say, you know what, we we're going to adjust this because of better weather. But I think if we have different options in front of us to think yeah. about, it's easier to make the decision rather than okay. try to keep it all in our head right now. About I don't know. I know. I've been staring at this for months, so I, I do get yeah. that. Okay. Does that seem like a sensible way to proceed? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Can, right, I so add one more, can I add one sure. more item just to sure, our conversation about, about the branch? Yeah. I think, um, and we'll know better at our next meeting, obviously, at the December meeting, but I think it would be my opinion that if this looks like we are not going to open by January 2nd, 3rd, I guess the 3rd, um, then I think we need to do, I think we need to really go out there with, a, you know, an article about the difficulties we're having in supply chain uh -huh. and things like that. Because I think to start off the new year without this opening, I yep, think it's I agree. Yeah. 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 Yep. I've already had inquiries. So, yep. yeah, I think we just need, really need to hit it, you know. Well, why don't we also do this? Uh, why don't we do this, and Lizzie, too, uh, um, yeah. for the next meeting? If it if it looks like, you know, it's going to be January or whatever, can you just draft up some yeah. have it back ready to go. about it, and we can take a look at that. And if we approve it, we can have it, uh, you know, get send it to the paper, put it on the town website, right. uh, the patch, and all that sort of stuff. Okay. When's, when's the next town newsletter? Um, that is due November 15th and it goes out the December 15th. Yeah. So yeah. it's too, I think that might be too early to make that, that. that. That's hard. There's too much of a lead time. You don't know. Right. It's, yeah. You don't know what to well, write. We could put I, it I in agree. That, that, that's monthly. Yeah. yeah. And there's yeah. the Westwood minute Doreen cancel. Oh, yeah. right. And yeah. and obviously the library website, but I mean, I think people understand. Yeah. Supply. I mean, as someone who's, who's in the process of building a house right now, nobody has yeah. to explain to me about, I saw, about supply I saw chains. And, and, and all you have to do is turn on the news and, you know, the port of Los Angeles is operating yeah. from seven. So uh, it's not surprising. And I think people would, will understand it, but I think trustee persons is right to, to go the extra bit to explain that what's going on. They're going to understand it. Because of, just, they're all they're all waiting for generators or oh to, yeah whatever it is. That, so I saw a picture of someone's <laughs> Halloween costume that was just like dressed normally, but with just like a piece of paper and it said supply chain, and it's like this is the scariest <laughs> Halloween costume I could come up with. <laughs> I was like, yep. Trustee Van Al, did you want to say something? I was just going to say I think that uh, everything that's very true. I think people will understand it, and I think we could probably try to put. A positive slant on it because I think you know people are anxious to see it open. Yeah. Um, and, you know, talk about how excited we are to have it open. And gee, you know, this is why it isn't. But we all are, we all are living that. So right, in right, one right. way or another, right? I mean, the good news is it's taking a little longer than we wish, but it's going to be an enhanced facility, uh -huh. business center. It's going to have more hours, right? Yeah. Have new equipment. Mm -hmm. It's going to have a better experience for the patrons, which is what we wanted all along. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It will and be worth the wait. It will be worth the wait. The wait. Oh, yeah. should, that should be the title. Yeah. There you go. You can use it. Thanks, Jess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Went Wentworth Hall. All the W's. Went yes. Wentworth Hall. I love, all the, worth I the love alliteration. <laughs> it's all worth the wait. Um, any further discussion on the? Uh, so at the next meeting, we'll have an update on when the projected opening is, and we'll yep. talk about various scenarios for expanded hours. Okay. So right. we won't be voting on hours tonight. I don't think we're ready. I don't I think, think we're ready. No, I agree. Yeah, I'd like to see, as I said, I'd like to see different scenarios and give I Liz think it's a, great idea. a chance to think if we want to make sure we serve commuters, this mm -hmm. is the children, recreation, being open, that sort of stuff. But again, I think I, I think it's target. We're gonna we're gonna live and learn what works best in terms of hours. Yeah. Um, okay. Great. Um, strategic plan update. Another thing that we look forward to discussing. Uh, Trustee <laughs> Macy Phelps and Trustee Van Al. Right. The floor is yours. Okay. Well, Lizzie, are you going to? Uh... I am. Let me just get just gonna share the right slide. Slide. Here's your slides. Okay, great. Yeah, sorry. I'm just uh let me make sure I can share my correct 
screen. Here we go. So just by way of introduction um, for the members of the public, we are in the process of uh, doing a strategic plan. It's something that we do um, uh, every five years. Is it five years, Lizzie? I can't yes, remember. Yes, it's five years. Five years. It's part of um, our, our working with the Mass Library Commission in terms of getting state funding and also <laughs> as a, a, an ability to, a tool for us to evaluate what works well, how the library evolves in the 21st century. And so um, we're going to see an overview of the project. Lizzie? Yeah. I don't know who's uh, Maureen. Um, I'm gonna, we're we're, we're going to give you a sandwich. Yes. Okay, great. I'm going to I'm going to start and finish, so I'll be the okay. bread. And then uh, then then Lizzie's Lizzie's going to present a little bit about the overall structure of of how we're we're planning to the, the plan for the plan. Maureen will talk a little bit about the timeline, and then I'll I'll bring bring up the rear with the other slice of bread. Okay. Um, so yeah. So just to, is it uh, is it white a whole wheat? <laughs> we, yes <laughs> all of the above yeah. um, okay. and uh, right, yeah so I, I mean I, I in a lot of ways I get I get the easy work because um, to, uh, first we want to you know set, set the context uh, as we've discussed at prior meetings Maureen and, and Lizzie and I have been meeting with the consultant that we engage Connie Kranos uh, and just just to, to talk about what would be an appropriate approach to to planning for where we are now as a library and as a community uh, we've talked about the fact that we want to have a living plan, not just a big document that's going to sit on a shelf, but something that's lighter and really more initiative oriented, that is something that we, can be a tool, really, that, that we use on, on a day to day basis. Um, and so what, one thing we have to think about it right from the start is, well, where are we starting from? And, you know, the good news is I get I get the best job here because I get to say we're starting from a great place. Uh, you know, we both as, a, as an institution and as a town, we have great financial stability due to the good management of, of, of the town, the way we've promoted commerce and so on. Uh, we haven't established that the board is, our board is very effective and well-respected in town. Likewise, our staff, they've done a great job at continuing services through the pandemic. Everything is functioning really well. We've got great support from the, you know, from the town first of all, through, for the budget, but also between the foundation and the friends, we do get terrific financial support as, as well as just um, you know, uh, evangelists in the community. Um, you know, Liz, it's been great bringing Lizzie on board. We've got uh, you know, department heads, whether they, they've come in more recently or some of our uh, you know, more, more veteran players uh, are, are extremely effective, work very well together. Uh, we, we're we're, we're up, we're operating, we're still doing a lot of the hybrid things we used to, but people are coming in as we've just been talking about. Uh, and, and I think if anything, wh where we are now is we're on the cusp of lots of good opportunities because with these changing operating models, you know, doing a plan at this time is perfect because we've, we've got the, you know, a couple of years of pandemic and, and virtual operations under our belts, a great opportunity to step back and think what, you know, how, what's the best to bring forward. Um, and you know that things are, are changing just in, in our world as well as in our community. And we've got the branch coming online. So again, perfect time to be doing a plan. So you know, what's it's it, it, it's a it's just it's just just a, just a great time. We're starting from a good place. So no pressure, Lizzie. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> so um, and as I'm just going to go off of what Mary was saying of, of how we want a living strategy, and that's something that we all the staff know what our our initiatives are what our goals are we're all working from the same place and it's not something that we have to pull out once a year and look where we are and oh have we done that um, we want it to affect our programs you know what we offer our processes you know how we how we do the operations that we do to 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 do the work we do at the library um, we want it to affect people so not only the staff but in the internal culture, but the culture of the library when you come in through the doors, and um, and it affects you know technology, the way that we offer the innovative things that we do. So there's a lot of things um, that I like about this idea of a living plan. Um, so we have three goals for this project. So first, we're going to develop a clear strategy that the library staff, the board of trustees, that are they know what it is and we're behind it, and it will serve the community in new and exciting ways. Um, and this is the most important part that I'm excited about the way we're going to do this work is that 
We're gonna link the, the strategy to um, staff's workflows. And so it becomes more focused and more efficient to, to produce bigger outcomes. I know that when I think of a grand idea, we're, we're, you know, the library is a busy place and, you know, we're, everyone's doing a lot. And so to add to it, you feel like, oh, those are dreams we'll never do type of feeling. And the way that we're structuring this plan and the kind of excitement behind it is, oh no, we're going to look at what we're doing and how we can enhance it. And when we add something new to it, maybe it's going to be folded into the way that we work. So we're working effectively and efficiently, most importantly. So um, the first part of it is the strategy part. We're going to develop that plan. Um, the synergy is, is getting that in line with the organization, getting all the staff on board. And then by the end of, of the process of the next eight or so months, um, we're going to start, we're going to have an action plan. And that is developed right from the beginning in this, which again, it's okay, we have this great piece of paper and then oh yeah next november i have to make an action plan and we're going to start the stuff you know two years down the road it's by may i'm not gonna i'm stealing maureen's thunder as i'm going ahead but by the end of it we're gonna have two to three strategic initiatives ready to pilot and we don't know what those will be yet that's part of the strategy that's part of the research part of it but it's exciting i know i i was talking to this with the core team, the department heads uh, yesterday, and there were, Lizzie, do you know what the initiatives are? I said, I don't. I truly don't know what will come of it because it's going to come from the community. It will come from the staff and having the staff involved means that they'll be excited to implement it because it's not something that's coming from on, you know, on high. Oh, here you go. Go do this. It's, it's coming from within. So um, those are our objectives and I, I think we'll accomplish them. <laughs> Uh, the project structure, um, this was my favorite page when um, Connie and when we kind of went through this, because I was like, oh, this actually makes sense to me and it makes it digestible in a weird way, even though there's a lot going on. Um, so I'm going to just go through, you know, the, the different parts of, of this plan. And I'm going to start in the middle with that strategy team, because as I was saying, you know, that's made up of department heads and, and myself, and we're going to, you know, take this on as a weekly meeting, one hour a week where we have them set to, to first figure out key questions. What are we going to, what are we asking? And then what are we going to research? And so from that core strategy team um, below that, it says team A, team B, team C, those will made up of different staff. And so if Lizzie, staff have, yes. Could you just think for the uh, members of the public, sure. could you just say who um, the, the, the department heads are and what department they lead. So oh, that's a, thank you. I, we are being recorded. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, Claire Connors is the um, head of the branch, branch services. Karen, Karen Gallagher is head of circulation services. So you see her at the front door a lot of times welcome everyone in with her broke. <laughs> um, Christy Pasquarello is the new head of uh, the youth services department. And June Tula Kangas is our head of technology and technical services. And Abby Walsh also started, I think, last March, and she is our new head of adult services. So yeah, we're across audiences, we have all of that different audience interests together to build this team. So, and then from below that, it, we don't know what those sub teams will be. They will be made up of different staff who have, depending on what our research questions are and their you know, interest, they might, you know, be on a team that's going to um, look at what other innovation, innovative things are happening in libraries or the world across, you know, and how we can find our role. It might be into community connection. And so there will be a lot of staff involvement. There will be a schedule, so this won't be too overwhelming for anybody. Um, so that's the main strategy team of staff and then the sub teams below it. Um, the dotted lines over to the side, uh, Joan Murray is our head of HR in town, and uh, Daniel Sutton is the head of Youth and Family Services. Uh, they've agreed to be, uh, what do we call them? I think I call them, they're going to be called our subject matter experts. So um, they're just representatives that we collaborate with so many different town departments who will, who will be part of the research process of it. But, um, but working with Danielle and Joan and having them brought into certain meetings and get certain insight on the way that the library functions and, and what type of uh, programs we offer, I think that would be a great um, 
addition to it. So they're dotted lines. So they'll, they'll, we'll bring them in as we, as we do some research. Um, and then you'll see at the very top, we have the steering committee. Um, that's made up of Mary Maisie Phelps and Maureen Vanu, who represent the board of trustees. And um, I've spoken to Chris Coleman, our town administrator, who has agreed to also sit on this. The commitment um, would be one hour a month, uh, you know, give or take at the beginning. And um, they will, we will be giving them our monthly updates, deliverables. You know, this is, these are the key questions. What are, you know, the town and the boards, how, how do you want to prioritize what the library, which questions we're answering it? And so I think it's a really great way to align ourselves with the town's goals as well and having them be a part of the process, at least in the know. So, um, so that's the steering committee. And then all on the outside of the, of the circle are just examples of, of interest, interested parties and in, in the way that they will come a part of the plan. So of course we have community and that's people who use the library and people who don't, you know, how do we reach them? We will look into different, you know, demographic segments of the town of the community. Um, we have donors, as Mary said, we're very lucky. We have a really vibrant friends and a really vibrant um, 21st century fund and see how, you know, it plays into maybe funding some of a big initiative that we have. We look at um, different peers of, of, you know, libraries that we look to. We know we talk about Darien Library a lot. They're like a rated five-star library in America. So, you know, researching what other contemporary libraries are doing. So this just gave, at least when I saw it, gave me a structure of, okay, this, these, are the pe these are the players. This is what I know that we're working from forward. Um, and so, and a lot of these will, you know, this is also something that can, is not set in stone. We, as we move forward, it, things can be adjusted and maneuvered, which is what I like about what we're doing the process is that things can be, you know, the beta, we can, we can customize as we move forward. This next is Maureen. You're the peanut butter or the jelly? <laughs> um, okay, so this is showing us the um, actual time frame phases, um, four phases. And you can read across the top the October, December already in that um, starting up on the project. Um, January, February, research and discovery. March and April strategy formulation and sorry I have to move you. <laughs> oh I know we're blocked we are our, our views okay. blocked the screen. <laughs> no and then our implementation planning will be at the end. Um, oh thank you, Lizzie, that helps. So if we're looking underneath at the um, elements of each phase, you can see some of the things that are going to be going on. Um, each phase, will have deliverables at the end of that time period. Um, the four key deliverables, deliverables are across the bottom here. For phase one is our key strategic questions. And we're going to come to those by reviewing data, forming our strategy team, which we've kind of done. We're in that. Um, and meeting with the trustees, which you'll hear a little bit more about that. Um, tonight as we go forward and then you know outlining those deliverables in phase two um, a summary of the research findings will be developed based on information from the sub teams research activities developing surveys and tools and conducting more research and we're really um trying to focus on using um research that we already have, and then developing these questions to gain um, more research that will move us forward. Uh, phase three, will the de deliverable, sorry, um, will be a strategy presentation. We'll have completed the research. We'll put those findings together, synthesize things, and create our strategy and create a presentation. Um, and then in the end, we will have an MBLC action plan for members of the public mass board of library commissioners um, action plan. Uh, we'll have plan implementation. We'll link the strategies that we come up with to staff roles, structure pilots to begin and submit a plan to the board of trustees and the town. Um, I think we, you know, to, 
to talk about if anyone had any questions about the timeline, this would be um, a good time to talk about that. But some of the research activities that we'd be talking about, for example, uh, would be focus groups, surveys, et cetera. Um, and these would be based on the strategic questions that we will be developing. Um, so did anyone have any particular questions about the timeline at this point? Okay, looks, good. Looks um, very good and it looks like it's kind of expedited so that we're, we're in a, you know, by the late spring, right? Well, right. Uh, this year ready to start implementing, which, which I like. Mm -hmm. the idea. Yes, and we did have a lot of discussion about the timeline and it's really custom suited to our current situation. Um, and working around, you know, the day-to-day -day ongoings, the new branch opening, holiday season, and other operational needs. And did um, you want to talk about the, the meeting with the trustees, which will happen? Well, you know, is that later on in the presentation? That's the, yeah, I think we have a slice of bread. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Exactly. All right. Because I know, I mean, I, I, I know from my communications with the subcommittee about that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, and so, and I would say at this point too, we talked about the time frame that the plan will cover, and we talked about three years. Mm -hmm. um, so whether we want a three years to five years, um, and again, this can be flexible as we go through it. And staff, Lizzie and staff may have, you know, some changes in that, but we're thinking about a three-year plan. Um, so the town would get the plan in June of 2022, and the MBLC in October of 2020. Okay. Any questions? No. Okay. The other slice of no bread. Slice. Right. The other slice of bread, which is how does the Board of Trustees contribute? Um, you know, Maureen and I will be, as part of that steering committee, we'll be meeting, you know, quite frequently with um, or uh, monthly with Chris Coleman, with, with Lizzie, and I guess with, um, you know, with a, anyone else who needs to meet on that regular basis. But there's definitely a role for the broader board of trustees. And that's, that's what I'll, I'll get into here. Um, for, for one thing, you can expect that Maureen and I, you know, along with Lizzie, will update the full board of trustees at every one of our meetings. So we'll come, you know, prepared to keep everyone um, up to date. And you know, any of the, any and all of the trustees, if you have questions along the way, you know, thoughts, ideas, whatever, uh, we ask that you funnel them through me and Maureen and, you know, we'll, we'll kind of collate those and pass them along to, you know, to the, uh, the, the, the teams that Lizzie's working with. Um, but one very important thing we'd like to do right now is get more input from all the trustees. And so what you can expect is that on, I think we said Friday, Lizzie? Yes. Uh, we will, what we've done is we, we've worked with Lizzie and Connie to develop what, what we're calling conversa conversation starters. It's just a list of topics and questions that will be emailed to you on Friday. And what we would like to do is schedule one-on-one -on -one chats for you to speak with Connie, the, the consultant that we're working with, um, to, you know, to get your input and thoughts on it, just on a variety of areas. And what, what that will do is that will help, you know, get different perspectives mm -hmm. um, early on in the project and get your insights, which will help formulate some of those strategic questions that will help us figure out, well, what, what other research do we need to do? What are some of the things that we might want to incorporate in the plan? So you can expect to receive that on Friday. And what we're hoping, it's completely optional, but I, I think it would be great if all the trustees could have that one-on-one -on -one chat with Connie, and we're hoping to do that during the month of November, um, you know, obviously ske schedules permitting. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what, you know, that's what our ask is right now. Um, now, once we get into the other phases, when we get into the research and discovery phase, depending on what kind of research we decide is, is going to be a part of the process, um, we, we may want to tap into trustees for, you know, for instance, to leverage connections. For an as an example, if we decided to do um, a survey or if we decided to do a focus group, 
-hmm. We might, you know, want to find different, you know, people in different demographic uh, areas or, you know, people with, you know, maybe that maybe people that use the library, people that don't, whatever. And we would like to leverage the, you know, the board's connections for that. And obviously, we will um, ask you to read and comment on the findings of the of the research. Um, and then, you know, as we get closer to formulating that strategy and so on, we'll be reporting back to the board. You know, the board I've, will be asked to review, approve, help prioritize things. And then, of course, when we get get it to the implementation, uh, you know, how, how do we how do we make it a part of the 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 ongoing workings of the library? Is there funding that's needed? Are there initiatives that we need to champion? Are there thing, do we need to help get the story out to the community? So, well, you know, we can expect that those, those needs and those asks will be identified as we go through the phases. Great. That was a delicious sandwich. <laughs> I, would, I would also say uh, Mary and I have both had one-on-one -on -one meetings with Connie um, around the same, you know, kinds of questions and so forth that you're going to be receiving. And um, I, I thought it was really a good way um, to get started in thinking about what we want for a plan, um, thought provoking, but also uh, made me think about what a good idea this sort of living plan is rather than just completing a task. And as Lizzie said, you know, we don't want something that's just going to be put on the shelf and say, okay, check mark, we did that. No. So. Right. Well, thank you for the presentation. Um, any questions or comments at this point? So this will be something that we'll be discussing, I assume, at just about every meeting between now and October, probably next October. Right <laughs> <laughs> and so I encourage when you receive the um, the survey on, on November, if you could at all make yourselves available for the one-on-one. -on -one. I know that uh, I've spoken to the subcommittee and how important that is so that we have um, a real role to play in this. And so I encourage you to do that. This looks, like a, it looks like a great approach. Um, I thank you. I appreciate all the work all of you have done. And uh, I think it's very exciting. And I think we'll have a really, you know, really great product. I'm sure by the end. So thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, and if there's any further on the street to plan, thank you to the subcommittee. Thank you to Lizzie. Thank you. It's um, your first year to be to be involved <laughs> in this is, is I think it's a positive thing. It's I also think it's great. You know, but as I always say, every challenge is an opportunity. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is an update on our, our one of our great donors, the Friends of the Westwood Public Library, and Maureen or Maria. Do you have anything to tell us about? Well, sure. I'll just start and say that uh, the Friends are delighted to have uh, Maria as a co-liaison, and we've filled them in on her contact information and everything, and so that's great, although they wished Jessica well and will miss her. <laughs> it's funny. I did run into Tina Bronkhorst over the weekend. She's like, why are you leaving? I said, we rotate all of the, everything around. I said, that's why I said, it's not me. I'm not leaving you. I'm still there. I'm still a friend. <laughs> You're still a friend. <laughs> so we, we don't have, they have, they're having a meeting. Um, the next meeting is December 6th. Six, I believe. Yeah. Six. Um, and it's in person, so uh, we'll try to be there. I'll try to be there. Um, I will say in terms of the book sale, I just thought it was interesting. They had, um, and, and Maria may want to speak to this because I know she was a participant. They had um, a total of a 12 hour sale over two days and they made uh, $3,070. Wow. Now, if, and, uh, Meg McCarthy was kind enough to sort of do a comparison over the last five years of biannual sales, which have been three days each, uh, 21 hours, and they've brought in roughly at each of those between 3,500 and 5,500. So for a 12 hour sale, I'd say they did pretty well. So I thanked everyone who came out to support their efforts. So Maria, anything? I got the impression that they might be having 
more smaller sales, but maybe that's, I don't know. <laughs> Maria, you Ryan, always... did you want to add anything? Sure. Um, they always have a corner in the library as you come in to the right, where the, you know, a constant sale. Um, I think they did very well. Um, what they, <clears throat> they did a little something different. Rather than have a variety of prices, adult books were $2, uh, unless otherwise marked from old sales, and children's books were a dollar when they might have been 50 cents or whatever. And it just seemed to work out better. You know, people had no problem with it. They, they, they wanted to get the books moved. Yeah. And so I think that they did what, they, what their objective was. And um, I think $30,070 30, is very good for a couple of days, you know, not even two whole days. So they were pleased. I was pleased. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so nice uh, yeah, I wanted to add to what what Maria said that when I when I was there, I I was just delighted at their whole approach. Um, they um, uh, they not only acknowledged that it you know obviously you're raising money for the library and it's so on, but they brought in an environmental aspect in that that you're keeping books out of the waste stream, yeah. and you know you're recycling books. And they um, um, they they said you know what when you're done with the books bring them back and we'll sell them again next year and, <laughs> you know my husband and I have done that num numerous times we bought books and then yep. you know and, and donated yeah. them back and and probably bought them again because we forgot um, but uh, it was I, I thought it was a great experience thank you Lizzie I know they were supposed to be people could start donating again did you notice that yeah and people have started November to come first. back to oh, donate yeah they. They had said starting November 1st, but it was probably right. the day after the, you know, and we accept, of course. So they are accepting donations now. Um, Meg and Amy are doing a great job sorting them, keeping, filling up the okay. friends room again. Um, and Maria, thank you for rem reminding everyone about the book nook. And I did want to say that at the new branch, there are, we have an expanded vestibule area on the, in the front in the Washington street side. And the friends will have like three or four shelves in there too. So whether you're visiting the new branch or the main library, you can also buy some books there. So, um, and you know, Jess, you're right. I think that there are talks of doing more three hour pop-up sales. So on a Saturday morning, um, there might be one in December, you know, right before the yeah. holidays, which I'm always gifting everyone in my like I said, right. friends of the like library. I, said, like I, I did run into Tina. I didn't know if it was top secret, but I, well, kind of it's like, you know, we're keeping Not everything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she, she kind of said that, you know, she wanted to do like themed book sales. I don't know how that will work or if it's possible, but I great love idea, the ideas. Great idea. Great. Yeah. You know, especially like in the winter, you can have your you know, your mysteries and your- oh, yeah. Exactly, you know? and you were saying like beach reads for the summer, Ex right. same idea, right. exactly very bad. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm glad to see that they were, they were able to raise $70 more than the 3,000 that Mary and Bruce probably contributed. <laughs> <laughs> but then we'll donate back and resell. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. But with inflation, it'll be- Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Say, you. Lizzie, does the guy still come and like collect all the books at the end of the sale or have they? I don't know if he did that this time. Yes. I know that there was a lot of work on their, on their part, on the friend's part of yeah. sorting them. And, and, you know, there's a lot of things that he wouldn't take and stuff. So I'm not sure if they still have that set up or not, but there awesome. wasn't much left this time. That's Trust awesome. Ryan, did you want to add anything in conclusion? Uh, they did come. He did come oh, on did Sunday. Okay. Oh, um, okay. I have to say that I was there for three hours on Saturday, um, on Friday, 10 to one, and people were delighted with their, with their purchases. Yeah. Uh, teachers, uh, a college professor came, she was sending her sister who was a, a grade school teacher later on in the day. One man was so, it was so nice because he got an art book and the art book was priced at $4 because it was an old book. It, I, Meg told me it had been around for years and he was just in awe holding this book and buying this book. And we felt so good that someone got the book who really, really loved would it. appreciate it and wanted. And it was on Amazon for well over a hundred dollars. Oh, wow. So they, well, as right always, treasures that are, you know, could be awaiting yeah. you. <laughs> well, as always, we, was happy. Mm -hmm. we, we are so lucky to have um, the friends mm -hmm. as, as we saw in the presentation and one of our core 
constituents and our donors. Um, and we're also lucky to have the foundation. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is the 21st Century Foundation. Report. Good segue. Yep. Yeah. Whoa. Smooth. You're going to be on the news one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so the, the, the fund didn't, has met. Um, one order of business that we, we undertook at our last meeting was to reelect our um, officers for the year. So I'm continuing to serve as the president slash chair. Uh, Paul is the clerk and Mary Beth is the treasurer. Um, and to, to, to Jessica's point about, um, uh, about shifting roles, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put that out there to uh, fellow trustees to think about, about those potential roles for the future so that we can also get, get new blood. Um, I'm ha happy to continue serving, but uh, I also recognize that it can be good to get fresh perspectives and, and different skill sets uh, so, uh, you know, certainly feel free to, uh, uh, if any of the trustees want to know, any of the other trustees want to know a bit more about how the fund works and what those roles are, you're more than welcome to. And who knows, maybe one of these days I'll be able to misspell Jess's name in our minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Revenge can be sweet, right? I'm just trying to keep everyone on their toes. There we go. I, I know. I know. She's doing that on purpose to make well, sure. Well, because it wasn't the first two. It was the third time it was mentioned. It was kind of like, oh, she's got this. Oh, wait a minute. The well, K I, is just, really close to the I. The K is really just, close to the I. It is. It is. Just for the record, I kind of like Miss Mask Phelps. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I keep the minutes for the 21st Century Foundation, and I always spell. Uh, Me. It's my name I misspell. <laughs> Mary uh, Mask Phelps. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, but uh, but the, the the fund continues to perform well. Um, <coughs> Torsten Becker and and uh, uh, Brian Molly, our, our our other members, are doing doing a you know fabulous job uh, of managing the fund. So it's doing very well. We do need to raise money. Um, both to you know to support some of the ongoing grants we want to do, but also as a 501c3, we need to demonstrate that we're reaching out to the community and getting broad support from the community. So uh, we you know we drafted a letter sim similar to the the one we sent last year, but you know, updated for the times where we do mention the twenty five thousand dollar grant for the for the branch. Um, Mary Beth and I, uh, trust, trustee persons and I have been working on expanding our, our list. We, we tend to focus on past donors as well as, you know, contacts from the, the board, um, but we are expanding it to include some of the streets around the, the branch, you know, people who might, you know, want to take notice and think, oh, you know, yeah, maybe I do want to contribute. Um, and uh, Mary Beth, I know you, you've been working very hard to uh, find a new printer and get that set up. And I think that uh, you, you said the, I saw your message from earlier today that uh, that should be in the mail shortly. I think people, it seems like it should probably arrive before Thanksgiving. Yes, it will, definitely will. So hopefully it may, might even arrive as early as next week, if not the very beginning of the following week before Thanksgiving. If, right, and if, if members of the board are interested in um, outreach to people who got the solicitation, we'd be happy to share yeah, with sure. the trustees. And if you know people on the list that got the letter and you'd be willing to follow up and mm. I think that that would, we certainly would appreciate that. So if you're interested in that, we can certainly let you know yeah. who the solicitation went out to. And if you know them, yeah. you know, you see them in the street or can't just say, you know, did you get something from the foundation? You, it really does a lot of good stuff. Yeah. So if, if you think we have a name of someone, do you want us to give you their name and address? Yes, please just send it to me. That would be lovely. Send it to you. All right, thanks, Thank Mary. Uh, anything further? And, and we're very uh, appreciative and the foundation is very excited about the business center and yeah. the fact that um, you know, we have done a lot in terms of professional development. Yes. But I think this is the first major capital project right? since so. Um, yeah. and, we're, and we're thrilled that it's going to the branch. Yeah. So, and, so. and just so you know, and you'll, you'll all see it in the letter, but the foundation's been able to grant $50,000 worth of grants back to the library system. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's real money. It's real, it's great. Anything, any questions or comments? Anything else, uh, Trustee Macy Phelps on the- That's it for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think the next item on the agenda is uh, new business, right? Uh, no, I'm sorry, approval of acceptances and expenditures. 
so has everybody had an opportunity to uh, review the acceptances and expenditures on the report submitted by Lizzie? Anybody have any questions or on it? The chair will accept a motion to approve <clears throat> and expenditures made by trustee Macy Phelps, seconded by trustee Van Al. I'll call the roll, trustee Van Al. Aye. Trustee May, uh, Persons. Aye. Trustee Macy Phelps. Aye. Trustee Ryan. Aye. Trustee Cole. Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Just for, so, excuse me, Mr. Chair, for the record, I think it was Trustee Persons who made the motion. Oh, I'm I sorry. Thought, I, thought, I, saw, I, saw, I thought I saw Trustee Van Al raise. No, yeah. oh. and, and actually I think no, Trustee Ryan seconded. Think, I think Mary Beth made it and maybe Maureen seconded it. Or okay. Actually, I think uh, Maria so, seconded it. I didn't yeah. raise my hand. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I, I was like the auctioneer that saw yeah. something. I thought you would place another bid. You so can we agree that it was, was Mary Beth? I wasn't wearing glasses. Oh. All right, so trustee <laughs> persons made the motion and it was seconded by- uh, Trustee Ryan. Trustee Correct. Ryan. Oh, thank you, okay. Yep. And the vote was unanimous. Yeah. In favor of approving the acceptances and expenditures. And okay. uh, I will come by and, and uh, sign the sign the Yellow report. folder, I don't have it with me. I, the famous yellow folder. <laughs> um, I, I will be traveling starting tomorrow, so it will be when I get back next Okay. Week. Uh, okay, then now uh, any new business? I just had um, something I was thinking that I would like to talk, well, talk here, everyone do the board's opinion and talk a little bit at the next meeting. So um, I, there's, there, it, it actually came about when we were already thinking about strategic questions and mm -hmm. Mary Maisie, Mary Mass Phelps had a great one that was, you know, where does a library, you know, how does a, what's the role of a library in a polarized society, which is a big lofty question. And as I was thinking about it, and, you know, there's a lot of talk across the nation of, you know, books and the shelves and things like that. And I would like to um, just really bring to the board our our principles of how the libraries run and talk about our, we have how the library does have a materials reconsideration form and, and talk about, you know, the ALA's, you know, freedom for information and, um, you okay. know, intellectual freedom. So would you like to do, put that on the agenda for yeah. a presentation? Mm, yeah. It's yeah. always good yeah. to every once in a while to look at our yeah. policies and, exactly. and that's why we invite staff to come really to meetings yeah. to yeah. what's going on. So certainly uh, Lizzie, make a note to okay. include that as an Thank agenda. You. agenda. Any other new business? Okay. Uh, the, seeing none, the chair will um, accept the motion to adjourn. Oh, I, I'm sorry, before we go, I, I can't tell. Is there any members of the public uh, are participating tonight? There, yes, there is. Oh, there is. All right. It, there it, is. Okay, I, I, anybody want to open for public comment before we adjourn? <laughs> Is it, uh, is it Lynn, Lynn Vitti? I can't see the-, the It's Lynn Vitti. Uh, I'm, here, I'm here, but I was just, I was listening. I, I really don't have any, I just okay. listening in and- That's and, great. Uh, well, we all I'm want very to very members of the- hearing about the, the long range plan. Thanks. Great, well, excited. thank you for taking the time yeah. to listen. And we're always, we always welcome the members of the public and uh, we always afford them an opportunity to make any comments or ask any questions before at the close thank of our you. meeting. Yep. Oh, no, no um, comments or questions tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Oh. Enjoy your enjoy your evening. You as well. Okay, so the next meeting of the trustees, we're actually going to do a Monday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that we should that we would normally do will be um, Monday, December thirteenth at seven p.m. Uh, and so, um, unless something comes up in between, which will be subject to the call of the chair, and if there's any new uh, other new business, I will accept a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to Made by Trustee Van Al. Second, seconded by Trustee. Everyone else. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> the chair will call the roll. Uh, uh, Trustee Van Al. Aye. Trustee Persons. Aye. Trustee Macy Phelps. Aye. Trustee Ryan. Aye. Trustee Cole. Aye. And the chair also votes in the affirmative. So we are adjourned. Thank you all.